Well, all right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. I'm Sean. That over there is Brian. And back again is our good buddy, Joel. What's up, man? Hey, thanks for having me. All right, all right. Well, today is episode 69. 69, dude. Yeah. It's an exciting episode. Perfect for this. Uh, <laughs> perfect for this. <laughs> uh episode we discuss of acolyte because uh man it, w it was infamous before we knew what we were going to see and now we've seen it and it lived up to the hype no doubt there is tons of videos out there all everybody's talking about it uh but i believe we got some stuff that nobody else is talking about so that's what you came to us for so with that in mind before we get to anything, guys, please remember to hit that subscribe button, give us a like, you know, leave us a comment. We love comments and all that jazz. And uh, yeah, just remember that it's free. You know, it doesn't cost a thing to hit that subscribe button. It's a huge help to us. And uh, we thank you for it. Cool. Yeah. Always. Yeah. So my goodness, gravy gracious. What can I say about this? <laughs> This episode that we didn't already, well, first of all, let me say, I think I was more than fair in in trying to give this show a chance. I didn't assume episode three was going to be terrible because, you know, there, it was just speculation. People said they'd seen it, and of course it turned out to be true. But, yeah, I mean, I tried to give it a fair shake. I think I did, and I think I could have enjoyed it if it had not <laughs> gone to where it's gone. Um, but man, it's just full of writing, bad writing, just agendas. I mean, you know, never mind the agendas. It's just bad. It just, it just oozes ick. And, uh, shoot, I don't know. when I, I, Joel. Yeah. I just don't even know what to say about it at this point. I know that you have all good, great stuff. Uh, I don't know if I'd call it good or great, but it's, I, I've got the skivvy. You want me to, to start the down low? <laughs> yeah, you know, give us a little bit and uh, get us rolling because there is just so much different stuff to say. You know, I'm sure you'll spark something. Yeah, uh, Brian. In general, did you did you like the show, Brian? Because I didn't hear from. I know Sean is what he's saying. In general, did you like it? I've kind of hinted at it before, but, you know, I have a, a certain thing that prevents me from liking stuff the way that people usually do. Yep. I know um, the feeling. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I have different feelings concerning this episode as to everybody else, but, you know, we can get into that as we go on. All right. Well, there's a coin of phrase from Star Trek here. Let's do this. The Let's Acolyte, episode three. The episode's called Destiny. No forward slash. No part two. Question mark. Get that. Air date was Tuesday, June 11th, 2024. It's got a 41 minute runtime. It's half a sentence is what I would say. It's on a mysterious planet. The tragic journey of two sisters begin. <laughs> IMDB. I was like, wow. Even IMDB didn't want to say anything about this episode. This, yeah. this is incredible. This is a flashback episode, right? I mean, a lot of people are really upset with this episode. This yeah. is a flashback episode all the way through. Um, this episode is directed by Jung Yoon Park. I hope I got that right. Some apologies if I didn't. He's known professionally as Koganada. He's born in Seoul, South Korea, similar to our Seoul character there, uh, and JJ, and, yeah. and he's an American filmmaker. He's known for his uh, video essays that analyze the content form and structure of various films and television series. He's frequently commissioned by the Criterion Collection to create supplemental videos for its home video releases. That info came from Wiki. That's, I was thinking, I didn't know. Wow, they're still around. Why? Yeah, I was like, wow, they're, they're still doing this. But uh, that, that's it. That's our encapsulation beginning and, and title, if you guys want to. The next up is the sequence of events. 
Yeah, let's do that sequence of events. I didn't to say about it. <laughs> okay, you want to go ahead and go? Yeah. All right. I don't know. Are, are we going to do more of these, or is this going to be our last act? Line? I don't even know. I don't even okay. know. I, I sat there and thought about it earlier today, and I, I'm like, I just don't know. Yeah, yeah, because this is uh, – Joel said it earlier as we were talking before the show. Man, this is historical. I believe that we'll all look back on these this this time and and these videos everybody's making now all this stuff we're talking about this is a historical time uh for for star wars for doctor who for disney anything that's related to disney right now is is in a bad way and where we go from here is anybody's guess so i think it's a big time in history and with that yeah let's get back to it all right I got eight points here. Sorry, guys. This is, I'm not going to cover every inch of the show, and I'm going to try to keep it less than a, you know, less than a sentence because we all three have seen the show. And yep. all I'm all I'm doing is kind of, I'm kind of giving you and the viewer a heads up. I have not read these to Sean and Brian before. This will be their first time hearing it. So here we go. Point one, just inside the overlooking deck of Brindock Gate. That is the name of this this mountain. Uh, just before Osha gets her head tattoo, a witch comes in and says, "The Jedi, comma, they've sliced the platform." That's point number one. Hmm. Odd, huh? Right. Yeah. Number two. Unless you want to talk about number one, I mean, you might read into it. These, these are all the vital points that you needed to know from this episode. Most people are going to miss them. Most people are not mentioning these eight. Uh, I didn't hear points. that at all. Yeah, it's in there. I don't remember you can, it. You can pause it and see it. Uh, I was just about to ask you if it was on the cutting room floor, and you just got this from the script or something. No, it's actually in there. It's it. You'll see the you'll see the woman, you know, rush in and 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 they'll say the the, the Jedi they've sliced the platform. Yeah. See, yeah. now I don't want to jump ahead to too far, yeah. but I mean, like that's towards the end of the episode. But like, yeah, I I have theories about you know May and and being able to destroy that place. But go ahead. All right. Number two, uh, a scene soon after the, these are just like I said, this is, this is an order, but they're, these scenes are not, uh, particularly, you just need to know what they didn't stand are. out. Right, right, right. But you need exactly. to know. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Number two, the witches have no breath here when they're breathing and the Jedi do when they okay. get the lines, Republic law states, and then you hear the line, Brindock is not part of right. the Republic. Yeah. Osha says her name. And we see Osha say her name. And you see Osha with breath. You can see the cold breath. So light then, side has breath and dark side doesn't. At the, at the moment, yeah. Osha, Osha has, has breath. At, and then Anasea at the end of the bit speaks and we see her breath. Really? And that's that's point number two. Okay. I wonder if uh, anybody involved in this was a big fan of Clive Barker. For any of our Clive Barker fans out there that remember Magica. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what that, that has to do with anything, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> number three. Back to number three. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Osha, may we see your sister? Answer, right. where is their father? Next line, they have no father. Yeah, which is just like Shmi's line from episode one. Agreed. Important dialogue to note. Yeah, definitely. Now one did stand out for me. Yeah, for a lot of people. For everybody. Yeah. yeah. They, they kind of made it a little pregnant, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, well, they're very ham-fisted, man. Very yeah. juvenile <laughs> on the way they write. Right. Number but, four, uh, and it's going to be hard to miss number four. You, Soul hands Osha a lightsaber. Right. All right. At this point, most people are noticing that lightsaber, but Soul is ignoring May at this point. His, right. his directed attention is to Osha. Yeah. And you would you hear him say, Soul, would you like to become a Jedi? Then soon after, what appears to be and Anisea possesses Torben for just a brief moment. Right. Testing her influence level. Yeah. You saw that, right? Yeah. You, you think you saw it. 
that. Keep going? Or are you oh, yeah, keep going, yeah. All yeah. right. Number five, a few scenes down, we get the lines that will remain in infamy. I carried them. I created them. Right. This was the only thing we actually really learned in this episode. A yeah. meager six words and 47 years of Star Wars history completely changed. Well, see, yeah, I, I hear a lot of people talking about how this just totally belittles Anakin. And I don't necessarily agree with that because Palpatine in George Lucas's Star Wars talks about the uh, it not happening that it's that it's happened before, but it has right. but it hasn't happened in a long time. Yeah. So that means that this is not unheard of. You know, and then he tells the whole thing, you know, about Darth Plagueis the Wise and how he can bring people or just create life and all that stuff. So um, I don't agree with everybody that belittles Anakin, but I don't agree with it. I don't like it. It's new. I don't like the. <laughs> I guess I don't like the way they're going about it. Um, I don't know. I, I think some of their choices. I don't know. It's like, obviously, this is a cult. Obviously, they're refugees. Obviously, you're meant to think that there is some kind of Night Sisters influence on this, but as far as everything else around it, it doesn't quite fit, right? I don't know. Yeah, no, I mean, it just doesn't. We're not really uh, given a lot on that. Yeah, Yeah. go ahead, man. Oh, you ready? Number six. All right, the next morning, after we see Anisea uh, talking to Osha directly, notice that again, Anisea talking to Osha directly. She says the line, you're a very powerful girl. She doesn't say this to May. She says it to Osha, right? At some point earlier, we get the force dyad, and that's not dryad, that's dyad, reference from Anisea. Uh, She says the line, the thread tied you together before you were born. Uh, This ability, this dyad ability, was introduced by Ryan Johnson, uh, a force dyad, also also known as a dyad in the force, when two force-sensitive beings had a unique force bond that was unbreakable, uh, that made them one in the force. And that's from StarWarsFandom.com. We we see this with Luke and Leia, and we see it with uh, Kylo and Rey. And that's what I was going to bring up about Luke and Leia. Most people know about Kylo and Ray, but so many people forget about Luke and Leia. And that's, right. that's one thing I haven't heard anybody touch on. They keep talking about, oh, this just cheapens Anakin. Well, right. you don't say nothing about Luke and Leia. How did that not cheapen Anakin? You know, it's the same difference. They're all they're all kind of, you know, uh, Luke and Leia weren't immaculate conceptions, but they were forced twins, a dyad, if you will. So. It's all big deal later, right? The the story about them. Well, yeah, I mean that would be a Ryan Johnson thing, but I mean right. no, I mean they 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 were still, I mean like George, they were always twins, you know. It was always meant to be, you know, this kind of thing. It just wasn't explored like George didn't explore that kind of thing like people do now, you know. Like he knows it's there and the little seeds of it are there, but there's not like, you know, a ton of dialogue to support all the stuff like we have now where we can go, Hey, you know, this was what, uh, Kylo and, and, uh, Ray were and yada, yada. And these two twins now who by God, just do not look alike. One is ugly as sin. And, and the other one's cute. (laughs) And they're they're, young girls. Are you talking about young girls? Yeah. The young girls. They are twins. They are very, they are really twins. They are sisters. I don't know that they're twins. You know, well, I guess well, they yeah. are technically they, if they're they born at the same time. But yeah, man, are. you talk about two not looking the same twins. Literally, it's their skin color and hair is the only thing that's the same. Like they are very different looking. All right, we're we're headed to number seven, which is uh, a little bit later. Next up, we see Soul grabbing the hand of Osha. Osha, yeah. just after May, gets dropped. If you have to pause it, into what appears to be lava. Lava geothermal activity at the bottom of the frame. You'll see some embers spit up that are lava like embers, but you just barely see it. Yeah, I didn't see that. Right. Yeah. Number eight May is seen alive at the Bunta tree yeah, at right. the end of the episode. Yep. That's it. That's one through eight. 
And uh, my, my question is, do, in general, do we pretty much agree that, that everything I just read, the, the one through eight, it, it's everything we've seen? Right. We all, we both, all three of us have seen, have seen the, uh, you know, one through eight. Yeah. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, sure. It's there. Did you, did you enjoy any of those points? I mean, did you enjoy those parts of the show at all? Either one of you? No, I didn't enjoy the show at all. We just had a discussion about my joy. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, dude, like you said it there, there, you said it, there was one sentence in there that pretty much was the only thing that gave us anything that furthered anything. <laughs> what was the line? Oh, me? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's, it's, um, I'm sorry. Uh, it's six words. I carried them. I created right. them. Two different actresses. Six words, 47 years of Star Wars. Checked out. And that was it. That was, that was pretty much the big revelation. Right. Now, my feeling is, first of all, the fire that may supposedly started well i mean she did start it I, I believe anyway we it's off camera so you really don't know that either um you see her thinking about it for sure but i'm i'm of the impression that that master do which is what they're calling I didn't, we haven't seen him called that yet but that's what he's listed in imdb as the the sith lord or i guess he's a sith lord he's a dark jedi of some kind and my feeling is he's there and he's the one that that jacked that place up although now by what you say about the jedi see i didn't catch that first thing so so number one i didn't catch right right and that's right. that was important because i did have the i did have the thought that the jedi did do that there's references to it in the first two episodes yeah so either the dark jedi which i have to believe he was there because he gets may somehow he hooks up with may at some point can I just say, I, I got to interrupt here. I think Master Dude is like an excellent BBEG name. <laughs> Master Dude. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I figured that he did it all. But now I'm I'm pretty much sure that the Jedi just wiped that place out. Right. Absolutely. I think that's what we're out. supposed to believe, right? Yeah, and it's almost like they want you to hate the Jedi now. Right. Oh my God! You guys, are, I, I, I love it. So when you actually get to the point like that, I mean, uh, your words and Brian's words just now, amazing. Please let me tell you about the single Easter egg of note, and boy, Heidi, is it a big one! All right, please, make it, let please, me make let, a big deal about Easter eggs. Yeah, it's, only, it's only one. It's one big Easter egg. I don't know what That's you can do with this. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna have one giant Easter egg on the screen. One giant <laughs> Easter egg for mankind. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is going to be great. And yeah, it's going to drop like a turd like this episode. All right. All right. All right. So speaking of the episode off, off the bat, would you like to see another episode just like this one? No. All right. That's too bad. Don't worry. <laughs> You're going to get another episode that is almost exactly the same in the future. Often murder mystery TV shows and movies don't give the viewer the whole picture. In right. this very episode, we are witnessing what is referred to in the film industry at film school. Uh, yeah, uh, the, Rash the Rashomon effect. I hope I said that right. The Rashomon effect. In an article from Brian Davids at The Hollywood Reporter, you can find this quote. Despite being new to Star Wars, Turner Smith, speaking about Jody, which is Anasea, found herself in familiar territory as her frequent collaborator, Koganata, the director, directed her in the third and in the seventh episode of the mm -hmm. Leslie Headland created mystery thriller series. Episode seven will likely be our next Rashomon effect episode. Most of the interweb is thinking it's going to be episode five. So what's our big revelation? Because I found this little tidbit that was a side note from Jody. I was like, oh no, Koganata is definitely doing this. Now, why are we Koganata? What is the Rashomon effect? I mean, what's the big deal? You know, what, what is this doing to the viewer? Well, you two just hit on it. You two, you two nailed it before I could get to the paragraph. So I, now you know about the effect. And uh, let, let's talk about it. So uh, I, I, I can tell you the points from one to eight that I read earlier are likely, ready for this, all a lie. Smoke screen, yeah. It was all a lie. 
and you're being lied to on purpose. It's supposed to make you mad. It's supposed to make you angry. You're supposed to be argumentative, so on and so forth. Yeah. And my God, if you take a look at YouTube right now and you see all these reviews, it yeah. is doing so and in a big way. People I think it's mad. backfiring for, for Headland. I really do. I think this is a super backfire. But uh, I want to I tell you how we got here. So, uh, well, I hope I didn't lose my place, but it's basically you're, you're getting lied to. And this is working as intended, which is horrible and, and not something she should. I don't I don't think the audience is 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 going to understand what the Rashomon effect is. And if I didn't explain it to you today, it's so, going to be one of those one of those things. Headland says in an interview that we would get an episode based on unreliable narration. She didn't say we get right. two, but she said she was going to do one. Headland also saying uh, her inspiration of the movie Rashomon was a big deal. Okay, let me let me pull that up real quick because I got I got pictures. Yeah, this, pictures. This is Rashomon. All right. I'll make sure you get it right. All right. Uh, yeah. 1950. It's a black and white film written and directed by Akira Kurosawa. Oh, the film yeah. is known for a plot device that involves various ca characters providing subjective, alternative, and contradictory versions of the same exact incident. Rashomon was the first Japanese film to receive a significant international reception it won the golden lion at the venice film festival in 1951 was given an academy honorary award at the 24th academy awards in 1952 and it is considered one of the greatest films ever made the rashomon effect is named after this film that's mm. direct from the wiki so i'll give you an idea we're gonna i've got it uh, here's the trailer for Rashomon. I'm gonna pull it up real quick, and we should we should really take a look. This is from Janus Janus Films, and yeah, you, you know, you there's a lot free. of Kurosawa and uh, really what, <laughs> right, and what the uh, what they're doing, like uh, Favreau and and uh, Baloney, and now Headland. I know we don't, we don't may not have audio here, but it's just to no. basically give you an idea. Here you go, one crime. And uh, you can see why uh, four versions of the truth, right? Yeah. So I, I, I'll pause it here. Just look, so look we have homes. to watch this whole damn season just to find out like where we got lied to. Look at these humps. Yeah. It's like well, the, you it's know, like the Gamora hump. <laughs> they said that this was going to be the beginning of the end of the Jedi, and so right to just turn us against the Jedi altogether sounds like their plan. Right. So those one through eight points earlier, likely most of them are a lie. Mostly yeah. they were, they were most, they're mostly there just to anger us or for you to write a whole bunch of uh, copy, you know, basically on, wow, I can't believe they did this or I can't believe they did that. And people are on YouTube. They fell for it. They went straight for the bait right. and, and yeah. dump, you know, uh, there might it is. be a strong word. I think it's more like bamboozling, right? Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's super bamboozled. Yeah. All right. Well, here, here's something else. And, and people can make super edits and super cuts. I, I didn't do that. That, that, that. Sorry. But I'm going to I'm going to let you see a little bit of episode seven, a little bit early, just from what we have, which is amazing. So due to the trailers we have pre previously seen, we get a little dip into the Rashomon effect episode episode. What I, what I think is going to be episode seven. I think you right. think probably it's going to be episode seven at this point too, because they're getting Koganada to come back. Obviously he's the, he's their Korean, yeah. you know, South Korean. You get my idea. And that's, yep. there's eight episodes in the season. Yeah. Why not wait to tell us the truth until episode seven and then have episode yeah, eight. Yeah. Then you the wrap it up in a battle. Nobody's right. got this scoop except you. So here All we right. are. Yeah, so let's take a look. Um, in the trailers, we see Kelnaka with a green saber leaping through the air, flying towards Torben. What you might have missed was uh, Torben, he gets hit in the face with the tip of the saber, scarring him and blinding his left eye. And uh, let me, uh, let me. I don't know if I pulled up the Torben bits, but let's uh, let's pull up this Torben bits so you, so you can get an idea. This is at the end of this episode. Here's Torben. So here's Torben over here, far yeah. right. And uh, I, I did blow it up, but obviously you can see the, the picture is blurry. So there's nothing we can do about that. 
Uh, so there we go. But you can see it. There's the scar. Oh, yeah, he's got the scar already. You see? See the yep. scar? And so he's already blind in that eye, you know, but yada, yada, yada. Can't do anything about it. But if you, it's a blink and miss it moment because let me go I think I did catch scene. that actually. Yeah. This I, is I the noticed his eye was cut, and I, but I didn't remember how it got cut. Yeah. So it was Kanaka? Uh, Kelnaka. Yeah. Kelnaka, so, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm thinking Episode Banaka. three only gives us a shot of this aftermath at the end. When we get, this is, you know, back to the ship and they're headed for Corsair. If yeah. we go a little further back in the history of the trailers, we pick up a little more of Kelnaka's fight. There's a, uh, a force push bit with Torben. I, I've got that one from that, from that trailer. Not that uh, that's the leap we, we've seen. You might've seen the leap before. And then, and if you notice here, this, uh, the blue saber is soul. Uh, so this is Soul. He's been yeah. knocked down. Uh, this is Kelnaka going through the air. And this is Torben right here, right before he gets scarred. I don't even but, remember this. Right. Yeah. I, I'm going to play it all for you. I've don't watched worry. it twice, too, dude. I, we're going to, we're going to, we're going we're gonna, to, it's going to be cookie. I mean, it's, uh, you're, this is hot for you. Trust me. Yeah. And then here is, uh, here's Kelnaka coming in, about to hit him in the eye. Oh, they were mind fucking him. Yes. And then but this Kel wasn't in the show. Yeah, isn't that yeah. great? Yeah, you're right. And Kelnock is going back with his hand, and he's about to force push. Uh, and this is still Torben. He's about to force push him down. And then there he oh, goes, force damn. push. Boof, you know, he's and you can see his eyes. There. Like they're yes, black. and his eyes are a little bit black. Yeah. And then in, in the same trailer, in this same trailer, we also see another scene from episode three, which we didn't get to see because we're not going to get to see it till episode seven. But they put it in the trailer like idiots, so I'll bring it up. Fucking A. Here we go. Mind, Sean, Here are the witches. You remember this. This was from trailers. This wasn't in last episode. Right. Well, right. I noticed the, the Disney I'm Plus making. in the bottom right. Yeah. So these are from the past six weeks worth of trailers. Yeah. I right. pulled these. Right. I pulled these millisecond blips out of the trailer, saying, "Why are they giving us these millisecond blips?" All the witches' eyes are black. They're kind of swaying and chanting when we get to that part of the trailer, and I, I've got them pulled up so we can. So we they can were watch them how fast they are. But in, in that in that crazy, so this so it is took also, them all to control the to control Kilnaka. Then it looks I, like I I have a now this is a theory. I have a funny feeling that Anasaya is probably controlling all of them. And Anasaya right, is doing it all because Anasaya did not die in the same room in this episode with them. And, right. and, and like I said, the, most of the episode is a lie. But and we don't know. And, but we'll, we're not going to find out till episode seven. So here, this gives us a little window. This is part of the true episode. The Kelnaka yeah. fight, true. Torben, true. This, why would right. I doubt this would be true? Of course, right. this is true. So they, they may be controlled. If you remember in this episode, they had no scars. The witches had no scars on them. They weren't burnt. They weren't hit with sabers. They Nothing happened. Heck, I don't even think a saber came out on this yeah. episode. I don't think it did. I, how how did frustrating. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, how frustrating was the viewer going to be by the end of this episode? I think she really overdid it, you know, retconning the force but my god how, well you know how dude, crazy i was i was trying to think of why that scene with kill naka and osha like she goes over talks to him he says something which they give us no subtitles for so nothing is and then she, you know there's a little look there when when the scene's almost over yeah um well, and I that's mean, it but just like there's nothing further context. there well no, yeah, yeah now like, but Without that, like it makes no sense, like why that scene's even in there. Like well, unless he for the setup, right? Yeah, they're set up to you, nothing. It's you to make that, you mad, like, regardless that there's going to be some payoff later. Right? Yeah, well, it's just not done well. Right. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not. It's done so poorly. I don't know how many people are going to make it to episode seven to see yeah. the truth. I have no idea. Anyway, let, let me show you where this comes from. Right. This is um, this is the Acolyte June seventh trailer. Is where I pulled this one from. Let me swing it over here. Shink. All right, and this is certified fresh. Sure it is. Yeah. All right. There's our whip. Around. There she is. Here it comes. Blink and you miss it. Boom. There yep. it went. So, and this is also a scene we haven't seen yet. This is the dark robes. And I have a theory on this. The wife told me to make sure you say it's a theory. But as you can see, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, you see the, see this? It's an outfit. Yeah. Why is it an outfit? Who is it an outfit of? Sith. 
Yeah. So what is what does this mean? What could this possibly mean? Well, she obviously as we're going into theory territory here, but, but yeah, what well, I mean, mean, like, so the only two there are right. So this, <laughs> this, uh, this master that she's going to have is obviously somebody else's patty one, probably Plagueis's, and he's going to kill him or somehow or something, but she's going to end up being this dude's patty one or whatever they call or, him, or acolyte. This is another projection, right? Like Brian's everything we've it. seen of this new master. Brian's on it. Brian's is <laughs> All right, so that's, uh, that's I how a lot of, like this is yeah, produced these days, right? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, I know we're laughing. Friday and I are laughing about this because we did it in Star Trek, man. We, we know it's like, oh god, we got a throwaway ending, and and I, yeah. I do suspect we we may be going down that path. And so, folks, if you're listening here, this is a pretty good spoiler. Please don't listen to me and Brian <laughs> when we say these sort of things. But Star Trek, well, you know, was a throwaway ending. It just wasted a whole freaking season. Yeah. And, and what what we yeah. might be seeing in some of these these clips like this is we might be seeing there is no osha and may the two become one as it's right. stated in this episode as yeah. you saw in the one one through eight on the points i love i love it when brian hits it on the head he's into it he knows he knows this is a throwaway he knows he absolutely knows so uh yes the one through eight that i showed you is everything is directed towards osha osha and may are the same person likely they're Oshime and there's some kind of schizophrenic disorder DID there's some there's some big thing going on she said she made everybody watch Fight Club okay well what happens yeah there's Fight no Club? doubt about that like they're the you same person I mean? it is very so, Fight Club that's a that's an excellent way of putting it yeah. Neil, for yeah, sure she, well she said it she said she made everybody on the cast watch Fight Club I told Brian in a note I was like hey man look at Memento look at the tattoos look what's happening here and that's that's Nolan and we talked about that during Fallout and I was I was like oh my god it's a to b and it's a throwaway and, and brian was like you know telling me about it the other day and i was like oh man people are gonna be just so mad and and i know they're not gonna be able to deal with it they're not I mean, memento didn't do great and believe it or not fight club didn't do great but it's a those two movies are cult oh, fan favorite yeah. movies people watch the hell out of them they really do so what we yeah. might see likely what we might see is even when you see uh may in the four shot and you see the lightsaber turn on in the background there or even when you see the two shot and i put it up here that shot this is probably all fake this is probably all a lie this is all yeah. probably part of the rashomon effect and you know how we had doctor who split apart in yeah. the shooty gatwa and there we may actually see the two become Join one together. like the two yeah. planets yeah 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 so the, well that's the what that goes, damn circle you know, is in the in the freaking hey, titles man on the train yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're headed down the track all yeah. right man because so they've you, said that too you, you by the way that o is right. one o it's not two o it's not two so that's you important got to the plot yep I think so too. So I kind of think they let the cat out of the bag just a little bit too much, but whatever, you know, I mean, it's, if they didn't think that somebody like, I mean, we saw it in Star Trek discovery. I, I was like, really? Oh, here's the, um, here's the other bit. Here's, and there's, there's tons of scenes that Play are here. Too. Here comes the other fresh block. It's about right. There it is. Is this it? Well, that's the leap. Uh-huh. And then you get the her and then, uh, is it in here? Maybe it's the wrong one. Ah, no, there you go. Uh, that that is something we're definitely getting that we didn't didn't see before. Come on, I love how all these trailers look alike. Some at some point, right. uh, blue lightsaber belongs to who? Saul. Which we haven't seen yet. Saul, right? Saul. Yeah, you got it. So it's it's Saul. It's Saul fighting the master, and the master is likely. <laughs> Well, might as well call him Oshime at this point. All, all one word, <laughs> you know, just, uh, just go yeah. ahead. Uh, yeah. You know, but I don't know that. And that is a theory, but uh, yeah, I can, I can see where my brain would do this. All right. Here is the plan trailer. This is a while back. This is on June the 4th. No, I'm yeah, sorry. June the 4th. You look, it's already got a hump. <laughs> the hump was the whip. So there, there, there's the first bit. Let it play Where's out. There's our other bit. There's the witches. So here we go. Right there's the witches, that little tiny clip, and look, there's the force push. Believe me, yeah, we're not going to believe you because we just we, we know the Rashomon effects in play. I mean, and we know that's exactly what she was thinking. So Nobody's hit through. on this. 
I know. Yeah, we, we, we're the first. And so, yeah, if somebody actually watches our video, they're going to learn some little, they're going to learn, learn a bit, uh, learn a little bit about film school, uh, what you yeah. would learn in film school. And let me I get mean, to the I, last bit. And let me, I, let me tell you I this part. I find it odd that it hasn't been bought up, right? Because, I know, right? Like, well, like I, I said, they, touched on, they touched on the Kilnaka part, but they didn't yeah. touch on what caused it. So I was like, oh, they didn't want to go down the rabbit hole. We will, mm, you know, yeah, <laughs> gladly. So, so much about this, the way that this episode was done that it made it kind of o- obvious that this was going down that road. Yeah. And yeah. We're headed I guess that everybody way. Everybody was just caught up in the minutia of hate. Yeah, I know, right? No it's, it's actually working. She, she, she's actually getting it, you know? So let me read you her quote. This is my last paragraph, guys. In a right. quote to Entertainment Weekly. Oh, I know this quote. <laughs> yeah. Hedlund says, it just felt more dynamic and more interesting. She continues, as the writer's room and I developed the overall arc for season one, we started to get really influenced by Rashomon. And the themes of the show started to rise to the top of duality, seeing things from different points of view. Yeah. So it made sense to me that when you did go back in time, there are a lot of different ways to interpret an event that happened. If you keep watching the show, we do talk about that and explore that. I would say there isn't one answer to it. Some characters believe certain things. Other characters believe other things so you're going to have to watch and decide which side of the argument you're on credit to entertainment weekly there that's it that's all i got though that's my spiel well that sets up to something i want to add here which is they've they've already kind of hinted at this in another way uh the perspective thing and the fact that we've heard uh headland say that um it's all about the seduction of the dark side right that's a big part of why she wanted to do this yeah, she um, wanted to do a Sith-centric story. She really yeah, did. But it was all about seduction of her. That that was like yes. a big part yes. of it, right? Seduction of the Sith. Yes. Lesbians are the evil. The closest thing we've seen that that could compare to right now was the interaction with Soul and uh, not oh, Mary sure. Osha. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I have to ask, was he crying? He really uh, looks like he was trying. I swear to God, I even saw one tear fall. Was he crying? <laughs> you know, I was worried about the yeah, don't cry. I, I can go back and look. <laughs> this is pretty I bad. I swear I saw a tear fall. But I mean, like, even if he wasn't crying, he was on the verge of He's way, showing way too emotion, much emotion for a Jedi. Right. But now I don't know what to believe anymore, man. It's just like just like a real world. It's, man. it's just a freaking whirlwind of nonsense. The big takeaway for me from this is this is episode three. Yeah. We have episode four, five, five. which Headland has said is the most divisive. I was like, really? You think right. five is divisive, do you? So obviously five is not telling us the truth. So something four. even more hellacious happens in five. So four, five, six, probably all lies until yeah. we get to seven. And four and supposedly final- has the pronouns and stuff. Right, four supposedly. Well, well, yeah, we haven't seen it yet, so it's not, I'm not going to come. We'll, we'll save that for another day. It's yeah, again I'll, infamous, right? It will be an infamous episode, yeah. sure. Yeah, because those were the those were the first four everybody saw, or well, certain right. people saw. Right. So we pretty much if we if they got they got three dead on, so we'll, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're going to be right with four too. Right, but. Now we got to watch the whole thing to see how it plays out, and I don't want to give them the pleasure of getting the numbers of us watching them, you know, because uh, well, they, there's got, still I the mean, whole agenda thing that, that's angering about it, you oh, know. Yeah. I mean, they have on hate top of all that at this point, <laughs> right? Like we're barely even touching on that. Like I had a whole different perspective Stars on school. on how we were going to do this, and it's you know ter- I mean turned into a totally different episode, and that's where we're going to leave it. See, I told you, we was like, save your ammo. You may yeah. need it for four, yeah. five, and six. You're right. Save that ammo. Absolutely right, man. So, with that in mind, let's give it some ratings. Brian? Uh, I still don't know. What do you think? I'm asking you. I don't know. Arbitrary 
two point five. I'll go first. Hey, I'll go first. That go way, it, it's it. fair. It, it's fair because I'll give you the film school point of view. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give this episode a one out of five for now. Uh, I have to see episode seven <laughs> to make right. this episode complete. Maybe yeah. it'll be like that Star Trek episode where I, we went back Revised. and I gave it a better review after I, I had better eyes and and better mind on it. So I need to see episode seven. But I'm going to give yeah. it a one out of five for for giving us the Rashomon effect and taking my brain back to film school. I, I appreciate it. And uh, and seriously, folks, you know, may the force be with you. And I mean the old force and not the new one. Enjoy. Right. So that, that's my rating. Yeah. Speak of the threads thing, man, that was that was I wonder if like Meta bought some ad space or something was like, please, we got, you know, because they're both suffering. I mean, like nobody gives a shit about threads. And nobody wants to give a shit about this show either. <laughs> <laughs> They're just trying to save each other. We'll call them threads. That's what we'll do. Yeah, just pay us a bunch of money. Right. But I, know. Uh, I have the the fix uh, for Star Wars. If any of the uh, big weeks are watching or listening, uh, you don't need to be doing anything that you have on your slate right now. Clear it. Get rid of it all. Uh, just do live action um, Jindy Tartofsky. Just give us some live action Ooh. version of that. You'll make your money. Because there are a ton of us that could not watch, like me, I could not watch the cartoons, right? Yeah, I get. It. Uh, I, I could watch I some of it. I would see but... that. I would love to pick up on all these great points that were missed because I didn't, I, you know, I couldn't watch. It made my eyes bleed almost watching it. Yeah, that would be pretty cool to have them like go back and remake all of uh, the clone, the Clone Wars, and uh, even Rebels. I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing because I, I do because I, we what with Ahsoka, we saw the live action version of Rebels, so it's not bad. Uh, I, I would be down for that. That would be really cool. They won't do it, but it would still be really cool. You know. Well, I'm just saying that's it's material that's already been written. It's there. You know, you know the fans are going to like it. it. Just don't screw with it too much. Which, of course, that yeah. Oh, they would. Be able to no, they you're just asking, can't you're help you're asking, you're trouble. Right. Listen, you know, you, it's great that you have this this agenda in life and this thing you want to bring to the forefront to share with everybody but if you want us to respect you this is not the way to do it if you want to endear yourselves to us this is not the way to do it do not mess with our favorite ips you're you, you know who you're dealing with here this is fandom man you guys knew you were in trouble and you did it anyway and shame on you you're gonna hurt for this one I, i'm pretty sure it's gonna hurt you yeah and bob right now that I've heard that Bob Iger has is, is started just killing everything. Like Acolyte season two is not happening. They even struck the sets. But this is also coming from Mike Zero, and I don't know that I ever trusted a single thing that has ever come out of his mouth. Right. I don't know. If when, when, when I see the production notes and I can quote you a source, then you can believe it. Right. <laughs> or if right. I tell you, hey, I think Favreau left. Don't, don't get mad at me. He probably needed to. He probably was like, excuse me while I let myself out. <laughs> you know, you, there's, there's I'm glad you brought happened. that up. I'm glad you brought that up because we did get a little piece of news. We don't know how old it is, but, you know, Baloney's working on that with him. So depending on how old that little piece of news was, it's still happening. Yeah, I can't tell because I think he, that was when Ahsoka was on the air is when they it were talking. You know, it was a yeah. while back. It I don't know if they been, put it up late. But the video just had come out. So the video yeah, was new. Why would he post it this late? I don't know. I don't know either. But I don't know. Maybe it's not as old as we think it is. But yeah, to have <laughs> to have Rosario there too, yeah, it seemed like that would have been a promotional deal. It right, would yeah, because yeah, you had to pay Hayden and Rosario to, to be there. Oh, yeah, that seats. was right. Hayden, too. Oh, yeah, I've totally Hayden forgot about, about Hayden. Yeah, yeah, there's no other reason for him. Yeah, what am I talking about? Shame so, on you. Yeah, it probably has changed since then because that was a while yeah. back now. In the grand now, scheme I don't, thing. I did, you notice I didn't put the numbers in here. I don't have solid numbers. I, I can tell you that, you know, 130 million is that That's you think might, might be the figure that might be accurate. This thing probably did cost 180 to 80 million. I sent you some links of on average, and this is a guesstimation, guys. On average, you're going to spend about 40% of the budget. Well, Hedlund has, and Kennedy have both said 180 million. So you take 40% of that away. That gives us the, I guess, 130 million roundabout. You know, it, it, you think it's a million dollars a minute, and technically it kind of is. But how did we get the Soyuz spacesuit from 1968? How did how did we get the this Kelnaka? episode? I know, right? This this episode starts with Kelnaka, who's just a, and you can go back and look at it. It's just his head. 
and nice. there's no fur you know anywhere else it's just a shaved guy. wookie yeah right it's a shaved wookie and then that's it they, they i think they knew they screwed up they caught it somebody on set continuity you know somebody said hey man get the get, put him in a vest yeah uh, he looks like he's you know a guy with a wookie mask on I, I, think the, I think the practical effects are heavy and i think they spent all the money there and and they didn't i think they're having problems with the budget or they had did you give it a star i did i gave it one out of five one out of five that's right okay so i'm gonna give mine i'm gonna give it a two i'll stick with my two five i'll I'll be, I'll be the the generous one with stars generally speaking sounds good i may revise mine too like you said yeah. when we see yeah, how this is all all for all of us i'm sure yeah, yeah. so <laughs> there it is man i mean like we're gonna have plenty to say about it i guess i don't know how we're gonna do we may just do them every podcast and i don't know if we'll do extra shows or not i see i just have to think about it I did but want it, to drop one last thing. All this nightmare with all of the platforms, streaming, and all this other stuff, it's only going to get worse in the future. Um, and I, I guess that's why I dropped that hint earlier, earlier is because, uh, you know, streaming, there are more and more people pirating these days than ever because streaming services keep jacking up uh, their prices, lowering the quality of their services. And, uh, you know, people are like, I don't, I don't want to pay for that. Right. Ahoy. <laughs> Yo. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking it's, you know, I, it's high time that we boycott Disney, man. I mean, yeah, you got to make sure a you'll statement. Have to. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know I that you'll have to either. Yeah, they're we'll auto see. boycotting themselves. I mean, if you, yeah. if you look at them lately, they're just, they're doing it automatically and they think they're doing the right thing. And I'm like, really? This reminds yeah. me of the, what is it? The uh, hot fuzz. Was that the name of the, was that what it was? Hot uh, fuzz. No, yeah. you know, the, uh, uh Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This reminds me of, uh, uh, Oh my God! The coven, the coven right. of people in the town. Yeah. You well, know, the greater and, good. Yes, and they all hum together. The greater, the greater good. good. You know, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, really, Disney? Garb. You're the greater Garb. good. <laughs> I'm like, come on. <laughs> Yar. <laughs> Such a great movie. Go watch yeah, that. Go watch it. this. Yeah. Watch that. Well, so that's it, guys. You know, uh, stay tuned and we'll let you know when. Uh, well, I guess if you see a video out after the next episode of Alkalite, you know, we started doing our reviews on those in addition to the podcast. And if you just see us next time on the podcast, then you know, we just decided not to do it all. So that's it for us. Remember, guys, as always, be excellent to each other. And Brian, Joel, and I will see you on the flip side. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one, everybody. Yeah, and y'all get ready for your retcon. Here it comes. Meow.